This next slide is just taking a closer look at the annealing temperature study we performed. Annealing temperature is very important for specificity and peak height balance. The top graph is showing the average peak height plus or minus the standard deviation at each temperature. And below are representative electrophorograms at 58, 60, and 62 degrees. The Y scale is set at 20,000 RFU. And you can see that the profiles are robust at plus or minus 2 degrees of our optimal annealed temperature of 60 degrees. The Global Piler Express Kit is designed to be human-specific. However, different thermal cycling platforms can affect specificity. So we performed a species specificity validation studies with five non-human DNAs, eight nanograms of each DNA in a 20 microliter reaction was added directly to the STR vials. We tested three replicates for each species. We also wanted to test a microbial pool containing the most common organisms found in the oral cavity. In this microbial pool, 10 to the 5 copies of each microorganism was present in a 20 microliter reaction, and we tested 5 replicates for the microbial pool. This next slide is showing you the results of our species specificity study. As you can see, no reproducible artifacts were detected, except for a big artifact around 95 base pairs in horse. This is similar to what life technologies have observed in their validation studies, and this is documented in the Life Technologies User Guide for Global Filer Express Kit. Our PCR protocol was optimized for single source reference samples for blood and buckle swabs. So to test sensitivity, we performed three different experiments. We did a titration with 1,000 M cells on, loaded onto swabs starting with 200,000 cells down to 6 and a quarter thousand cells. And this DNA is equivalent to about 1.2 micrograms to 38 nanograms of DNA on a swab. We also performed a titration experiment with blood. We purchased blood from three donors collected in EDA tubes. We quantified the blood using the quantifier human DNA quantification kit, and the prep filer express manual extraction. The DNA concentration at one microliter range from 10 to 12.6 nanograms. We also wanted to look at swab collection because this can be very variable between individuals. So we did a swab collection titration with two donors. Donors were asked to provide six swabs three times, first touching the swab to a cheek for one to two seconds, and then swabbing the cheek one, two, five, ten, and twenty times. This next slide is showing you a summary of our sensitivity studies. Full profiles were detected for all buccal cell studies. In the upper left-hand corner, is a cell titration study. The bars represent the percentage of alleles detected at each cell load or collection point. The green line with the red dots are the average peak heights plus or minus the standard deviation. As you can see, generally average peak heights will decrease with decreasing amount of cells collected on the swab. The lower two panels are showing that we get whole profiles still being recovered from a single touch of a swab to the inside of a cheek. Upper right hand corner is the results of our blood titration study. We obtained full profiles down to 2.5 microliters of blood, which is equivalent to about 25 nanograms of DNA on a swab. And partial profiles are being obtained with one microliter of blood, which is approximately 10 nanograms of DNA on a swab. In the 
And this next slide is just showing a representative electropherograms from our swab titration experiment. As you can see, we still obtain a full profile from a single touch of the swab to the cheek. The Y scale is set to 20,000 20, RFUs for the 20 to 2 swipes. And then we lower the Y scale to 6,000 RFUs in order to better visualize the profile for one swipe and one touch to the inside of the cheek. We wanted to perform a mixture study to verify that our analysis software will flag a sample as poly 40, indicating a possible mixture sample prior to forensics expert review. Two cell lines were used to create the mixture ratios, as indicated on the slide. Both cell lines were purchased from ATCC. The number of non-overlapping alleles were determined at each mixture ratio. We also performed a stability study to look at the swab from individuals collected up to one year old, calculated the average peak heights and concordance. This next slide is showing you the detection of the minor alleles in one of our mixture studies. In the upper left-hand corner, the percentage of alleles detected at the different mixture ratios shown on the y-axis are here. The blue bars are the percentage of alleles detected. Below is a table of male and female genotypes for the two cell lines. And the right hand is an electropherogram of the 9 to 1 mixture. The non-overlapping minor alleles detected in this mixture replicate is indicated by the red asterisk. So the female non-overlapping alleles we detected was 23 out of the 24. This next slide is showing you a representative electropherogram from our stability study, showing the ability to obtain a profile from samples that are over one year old. The rectangular boxes indicate the peak height ratios for the profiles, and they range from 74% to 100%. And this next slide is a summary of our stability study from the four individuals. As you can see, all swabs yield sufficient peak height to obtain full profiles. The graphs are box plots of the peak heights from the four individuals ranging from two weeks to 395 days old swabs. You see the expected variability from buckle swab collection, but the peak heights are sufficient to obtain complete profiles at one year old swabs. This next slide is describing the precision and accuracy studies that we performed. We calculated the size deviation of sample alleles from the corresponding allele in the allelic ladder. And this was calculated from the buckle samples run for the concordance study. For our concordance study, we tested 150 buckle swab samples. Prior to doing this study, we created a reference database generated with the gold standard bench process. We amplified Glow File Express chemistry on the 9700 platform, separated on the 3130 Excel, and the profiles were analyzed in GMAP for IDX version 1.2. We also tested the NIST standard reference material 2391. We looked at components A, B, and C, which are single source samples, and component D, which is a mixture sample. For the NIST samples, we needed to add the DNA directly to the SDR vials prior to insertion onto the cartridges. We also performed a cross-contamination study to assess contamination lane to lane or channel to channel or between runs. We did an alternating checkerboard pattern looking at swab blank, swab blank, or blank, a little bit, not a blank swab. 
We did this alternating checkerboard pattern to ensure that all lanes were tested. This next slide is showing you the size deviation of the samples from the corresponding allele and allelic ladder for all less than plus or minus 0.5 base pairs. This ensures that we have precision to achieve one base pair resolution. As seen in the previous slide, our size deviation is plus or minus 0.5 base pairs. And this allowed for the one base pair resolution of microvariance you've seen in some of our box swab samples. We can achieve one base pair resolution starting at the smallest size amplicon, such as D2S441, which range from 76 to 113 base pairs, all the way up to larger size loci, like SE33, which ranges from 311 to 446 base pairs. This next slide is just showing you representative electropherograms of the NIST standards single source samples that we ran on the rapid fit system. All replicates were concordant with the certified NIST profiles. The genotypes are displayed on the table below the electropherograms. Our book of quantum Buckle study concordance study showed we had full concordance with the reference database generated on the bench processes. The right graph is showing the scatter plot of the heterozygote peak height ratios for each locus, and the median is indicated by the red bar. The median peak height ratios were all greater than 81%. From this concordance study, we also calculated the stutter percentages. The table on the left shows the mean plus three times the standard deviations and is being compared to the percent stutter values on the 3,500 observed by life technologies. Our stutter percentages are very similar to those observed by life technologies validation studies. In this next slide, we are showing you the results of our cross-contamination experiment. We did not observe any cross-contamination between the channels or between runs. We do see some pull-up in the blank channels caused by a high signal of the size standard. As there is no competition from a sample during electrokinetic injection, this can cause some pull-up. And this can also be seen on a 3130 or a 3500 occasion like To summarize the results of the validation study I have just presented this morning, we have completed validation of the global filer express kit chemistry on the rapid hit system. Our SWIGDEM developmental validation study showed full genotype concordance with the reference database generated by gold standard benchtop methods. Our DNA extraction and purification system effectively removes inhibitors, providing high quality DNA to achieve a reliable SDR profile. The PCR conditions are optimized and provide robust, reliable results within plus or two minus two degrees of optimal condition and up to one and a half fold changes in conditions. Our sizing precision allows one base pair resolution. Our heterozygote peak heights are all greater than 81%. We do not observe cross-contamination between channels or run-to-run, -run, and this allows buckle swabs to be collected after a run and either rerun on the rapid hit system or re-extracted with the standard bench processes. Reliable profiles from the system are ready for upload to the database after forensic review and internal validation performed by the laboratory. I will now pass this over to Joe Dezino, who will now talk about using the rapid hit system for coders upload. 